So what are the skills that will make you a better manager? To meet your targets, you're going to need to ensure that your team meet their targets. So I'm now going to focus on some of the skills you'll need to help your team to meet their targets, because you're really only going to be as good as the people that report to you. The basics of internal communication. Effective communication are the lifeblood of our organization. Employee communication. All employees should report to their actual achievement versus planned achievement on a weekly basis. This includes the tasks that were done last week and the tasks that are planned to be done in the next week and any pending issues. These reports might sound tedious, but these should be done to their supervisor either verbally or via email um, on a weekly day basis and they provide a very handy tool um, to monitor what your employee is doing and gives you an opportunity to reflect on what they are or aren't doing. Supervisor or team leaders should meet on a weekly basis to review the team's planned progress against actual. And supervisors should meet with their regional manager or data manager at least on a weekly basis to review planned against actual progress. And then to address problems in the field or with the surveys or with the team members. So how do you build teams? Teams don't just occur. You need to know how to design, build, and in, in result in a highly effective team. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the stages of development of a team. Teams go through various stages. The first stage, when you put a group of people together, is the forming stage. And during this stage, the people in the team will say, um, who am I? Uh, do I like this person? And they're generally friendly to each other. And they introduce themselves, and that's the forming stage. And then the next stage is the storming stage. Um, and this is when they start to voice the individual differences um, and start to jockey for position. And that's when the natural leader emerges within different parts of the team. And it's a very normal phase. Very often people get worried when the team start fighting, but it's actually a normal part of it. And then you move to norming. At this stage, they start to have a shared common understanding of the goals that they're trying to reach, and they know their position within the group, and the structures have been uh, developed. And then they move into the most important stage, which is the forming. At this stage, the team is humming. Members are actively participating in the team process in order to achieve the goals of the group and its organization. During this stage, the style of leadership becomes more indirect as members take a stronger participation and involvement in the group process. And lastly, the closing and celebration stage. At this stage, it's clear to the members and the organization that, achieve, that they, the team has achieved its overall purpose and the milestones, and it closes out. The next area I'm going to talk about is personality types, and every group needs a group of different kinds of personalities, and you as a supervisor or team leader is going to have to balance the personalities. Most people are a combination of conservative or liberal, organized or disorganized, reserved or outgoing, assertive or trusting, calm or stressed. And the first personality type I'm going to talk about is the judges. The judges in an organization are ambitious, determined, organized, and decisive. They typically employees who have lots of to-do lists, work schedules, and reminders and deadlines. And these employees are really good to do planning tasks. Then you have the perceivers, and they're the opposite of the judges. They're typically more open-minded, adaptive, changeable, and spontaneous. And they tend to respond well to unpredictable circumstances because they're more adaptable. Um, and an involved them in leadership tasks is useful. Then you have the extroverts. They're lively, energetic, quick-witted, clever. Um, and they like to interact with their co-workers. And they thrive in a team doing brainstorming activities. But you need to harness their energy and keep them focused or they will defocus the team and stop them from getting the work done. And then you have the introversions. They're the opposite of the extroverts. They're loners, and often they thrive on working independently. You need to make sure that they get some quiet time, otherwise they'll be overwhelmed with the extroverts. And then you get the thinkers. They're quite analytical, objective, rational, tough-minded employee that love to get into the nitty-gritty. 
And these employers like to focus on learning um, and are constantly looking at new ways to add to their knowledge. Once again, you need to harness them for the good of the team and not let them get stuck in going round and round in learning and not moving forwards. And then we get the feelers, and these people are passionate and empathetic and warm, but once again, they can get sucked in to other people's lives and not get the job done. So you need to make sure that they are motivated um, and don't get too bogged down with feelings and harness their energy to move them forward. So I would suggest that you take the opportunity and we'll give you some tools to either do an online test or do something on your tablet to understand what are the personality types of the people in your team so that you can better harness their energies. Now when you're designing a team, here are some basic guidelines. Set clear goals for the results to be produced by the teams, what the team needs to achieve. For example, collect three samples per household per team member from each household per day. Set clear goals for the effective team process. You must be at work 99% of the time, arrive on time, do your daily planning, find the houses, overcome participant objectives. Determine the roles of each member. Who's going to be the driver, the team leader, the field worker, and what are their responsibilities? Determine the processes that the group will follow. Um, whether it's open ac discussions, action, problem solving, generating recommendations, and identify any needs for training or materials. For example, um, members might benefit from a brief, brief overview of the stages of team development and receive training in uh, overcoming refusals. Early on, plan team building activities to support trust and build strong relationships amongst the teams. The team leader plays a vitally important role with the support of the supervisor in building team trust and strong team relationships which help us achieve our objectives. Support strong team performance. At this point it is critical the, remain, the supervisor remains available to provide support and resources as needed and support the team leaders in delivering and encouraging the team members to deliver 